بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم اللهم افتح علينا بنور العلم واحفظنا من ظلمات الوهم والجهل وحسن أخلاقنا بالحلم وانشر علينا من خزائن رحمتك برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم اجعل هذا المجلس خالصا لوجهك الكريم الحمد لله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us by allowing us to be in these gatherings where the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is mentioned. Where Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their name is being elevated and mentioned. Where we hear qasaid and songs of praise that soothe the hearts. Where we hear the wise words of our esteemed Shaykh, Shaykh Wasim, reminding us of attaching back to the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. There's no better gathering in which we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the gatherings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ That remind them of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what greater days are they than mentioning and remembering the day of the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's no one greater who was born, will ever be born than the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. If all the wise men on this earth were to gather, they would never be able to bring you anything like that which the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam brought. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah knows us huwa khalikuna. He's the one who created us. And he's the one who knows how to rectify our states. And therefore, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Shaykh Yusuf al-Nabahani says, Hu al-wasilatul uzma. He's the greatest interceder for us. And he's the door unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing that will bring you upon the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Laqad manna Allahu ala al mu'mineen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He's blessed. He's given us minna imtinan. He's blessed us. Why sending? Laqad manna Allahu ala al mu'mineen. Ba'atha fihim. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, within. From to the community, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rasul, that he sent what? Rasulan. Laqad manna Allahu ala al-mu'minina idh ba'atha fihim rasulan min anfusihim. From them, from all them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he never sent an angel. He never sent someone who was what? Foreign to us. La. He sent a man, a human, like no other man that we could relate to. We can what? We can be like him. We can follow him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that verily this, and according to some of the ulama, هذا here al ishara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing towards what? هذا is ism al ishara is a noun that what? Is pointing to something. وهذا has to be something that is what? Present, mawjood. You can't see something that's not present. So some of the ulama said, Hada here is referring to the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam. Fattabi'uh. And therefore follow the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam as we heard. Who are his here for us to take his what? His, head, his, his gift, his sunnah, his way. Fattabi'uh. Wa la tattabi'u subul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do not follow the other ways. Do not follow the other ways except for the way of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam, lest it lead you astray. There is only one qa'id, there is only one leader, there is only one sayyid, there is only one person that's worth following, and that's the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam, nobody else. And our ulama, our salaf, our tradition, they knew that from the very beginning. As we've heard, the Sahaba, Al-Kiram, radiallahu ta'ala, anhum ajma'een, they understood the worth of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. They behaved like him. They were what? Muzaj. They were, they were examples, walking examples of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When what? When Umar radiallahu anhu, he comes out in Medina al-Munawwara, and what? He's walking at night, and he's hungry. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu meets him. He says, Laysha Umar, why, why are you come out at this night? He says, Al-Ju, Al-Ju. He says, hunger. 
Ya Umar, hunger. Abu Bakr Siddiq, he asked Abu Bakr Siddiq, why are you out at this moment? It's the same thing, hunger. Hunger. Lo and behold, who do they meet? Their master, Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The, what? the master of all the worlds comes out and he meets them also. And they ask him likewise, why are you out here? Oh, say, Ya, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. al hunger. They what became like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ha, the nur that they took from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Laka ja'akum min Allahi nurun. That what this nur has come to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then what? We need to follow this nur. So they become like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look how Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal the veneration and the reverence and the esteem he had for the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. They said when he had the strands of hair of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, كَانَ يُقَبِّلُهُ He would what? Kiss the, the, the strands, the blessed strands of hair of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And he would place it on his mouth. And when he was ill and the illness wouldn't go, he would dip the hair into water and then drink the water. That was what? Immersed in the blessings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. لَيْسَ لَنَا سِوَىٰ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some people say, Hada, what? It's, it's extremeness. La, it's not extremeness. Because we don't know Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala except via the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We wouldn't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, He has what? Minna lakad manna Allah. He has what? We are indebted to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All good that has come to you in your life is by virtue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Your family, your understanding, all the goodness that you can think of in your life is by virtue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What? Allah, what? Al-Mu'ti is the one who gives. And the Prophet said, An al Qasim. I'm the one who distributes these blessings within you. And therefore, these majalis are pivotal in reconnecting to our liege Lord and our Master, who was Sayyiduna Muhammad. This point must be etched in your hearts like no other fikra. Like no other thing that we have nobody to lead us except Rasulullah who are is everything to you in your life. This has to be something that, that anything that comes that objects or contradicts or contravenes the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi We don't want any of it. We don't want anything that contradicts the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Nafso, his, him, him, he himself on his deathbed gives the bequest to his son. Abdullah he says, when I die, Place the three strands of hair of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam One on one eye, right eye, left eye And one on what? In my mouth when I pass away Right now Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu anhu Is buried with the hair of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It's as if he wanted to close his eyes on the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And he wanted to open his eyes with the love of the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam With the hair of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Look at our Imam You Hanafis so? You loyal Hanafis, because we are quite Hanafi here in Sa'id Institute. Imamuna, Imamul A'zam. In Al Hashia, he mentions if I recite Allahumma salli ala in after tashahud, in the Salawat al Ibrahimiyyah, according to us, in Al Qadat al Ula, in the first sitting, if I delay standing up in the third unit, in a four unit prayer, what do I do? Sajdat al Sahu. I have to what? I have to repair the naqs, the deficiency of what I've done by delaying the third unit because I said Allah, if I say Allahumma salli ala, there's no naqs, there's no deficiency. If I say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, khalas, you've said read too much and therefore you have to do sajda sahu. And now people said, Ya Imam, say Allahumma salli ala and there's no sajda sahu. Say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, oh sajda sahu. They say that the Imam saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a dream. They said, Ya Imam Abu Hanifa, Limadha anta anata anta takul Allahumma salli ala mu'a. Why have you, Limadha awjabta, why have you made it necessary sajda tasahu when someone sends salawat upon me? He says, Li'annahu dhakara. He said he sent salawat upon you sahwan. He says that he sent salawat upon you unintentionally. Out of mistake, without concentrating what he's saying. And in that mistake, 
he has to do sajda to so limada why did he mention your name unintentionally undeliberately hada khata lima this is why imam abu hanifa is what al imam al azam the greatest imam nobody could what match the qiyas of imam abu hanifa he says istahsanna wa istahsana abu hanifa he says we understood knowledge and we tried to look at rulings and meanings and so did Imam Abu Hanifa but we could never match the what the knowledge of Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu anhu look at Imam Malik Imam Dar al Hijra same thing never would ride in Medina what on a donkey never would what walk barefoot they asked Shah Imam why he says how can I ride a donkey on the earth where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa may have walked on this earth Hadi mafaheem these are understandings these are understandings if it's easy to listen it's easy to listen but as we've heard hada is a manhaj it's a way of tadhiyah sacrifice look the prophets were sent they have qualities that are what necessary for them from the qualities that are necessary from is what sidq they must be truthful they must be what have amana integrity they must be what fatana sagacity these are traits that the prophets have from their traits is a tabligh conveying the message the prophets had a da'wah they had a message that they had to convey and the da'wah the message of the prophets was above all else above their own nafs you see a da'wah al-batila those who call to something other than the truth or what we, what we hear in the news nowadays they will never sacrifice their self for that da'wah like in to us the da'wah is muqaddam al nafs the message is what? It takes precedence over your own self. And that's why you see the Prophet ﷺ, his tadhiyah, his sacrifice in the way. You see, we help those. We don't help the 2% and we don't bring anyone. Why? Because what? No, we help the kuffar or the disbelievers in what way? Because of our jahl, our ignorance. We don't know how to call them to Islam. We don't know anything about Islam. Ask and tell them about the Prophet ﷺ. La na'rif. Tell them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't speak about it because we haven't sat and we haven't learned. Or we were not willing to sacrifice. Not willing to sacrifice the time. Not willing to sacrifice the money. Not willing to sacrifice anything for the deen. And the Allahumma ansurna. Allah give us victory. In tansurullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yansurkum. If you give victory to Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give victory to you. How will victory come when you haven't given victory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your own self, in your own nafs? How can you give victory to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you haven't given victory to Allah in your own house? How can you give victory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we haven't learned the fard ain? Those things are personally obligatory upon us to learn. Kif, he can't. These things, these majalis, these are majalis tadkir, the majalis that remind us the path. Where we are, like in the work is in the daily grind. It's not in the majalis. The work is, you know, on Thursday when we have a majlis and only eight of you come, ha'ula al faizin. those are the ones who are successful because those are ones who are, are consistent upon the truth. You see, once in, in, in Jordan, one of Habib Umar's students has a majlis Thursday and he turned up without telling him that he's going to turn up to the majlis. And he said, Ya Habib, we didn't know you were going to turn up. He says, because I wanted to see that, you know, I was like, what, are you carrying on this majlis consistently? And I wanted to what, gift you by turning up into your majlis like this. He said, this is the work. Who are the sacrifices when what? There's only one of you, two of you, and you're studying knowledge. Ha'ula, these are the ones that are going to give victory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we live in a time where we need to give victory to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look how what's happening around us. The forces of evil. And you have to mention this. Because what? when the Prophet ﷺ, who rahmah, he's a mercy to mankind. Like in the Prophet ﷺ, when he met Abu Jahl. When he met Abu Jahl and they were insulting the Prophet ﷺ, went to Abu Jahl and said, I've come to you with sacrifice. And he says, Makuntu Jahulan. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, he says, Anta minhum. You're from those. After that, all the the what the lords of Quraysh they passed away or they died or killed in Badr. We're not an ummah that is an ummah that is what tame and timid. La Itana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're an ummah who have a imma kibar. We have the greatest people who ever worked on this earth. Wa wa our imma 
There's no one like the likes of Imam Abu Hanifa wa Malik wa Ahmad and the Sahaba and the people this Ummah has Abu Hassan al-Shadili wa Abu Abbas al-Mursi wa al-Jailani. Read the works of these people. There you would not turn nor blink to any other way than the, what, the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is nothing greater than this tradition. That's why we say, what? Tradition. Tradition is important. Our tradition, traversing the path, the well-trodden path of what our ulama, our sulaha. If you want to follow the sunnah, the sunnah isn't in following the hadith. The sunnah is in following rijal that understood the hadith. In following what? Men who understood what the sunnah was. If I say to you, and we mentioned this in classes, I want to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, I would say to you, study fiqh. المجتهد is the one who explains to you what the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Our manhaj and methodology is a manhaj of men. That you follow men who take you back to the Prophet ﷺ. And we have good hope that our Imam and the other Imams, they take us back to the Prophet ﷺ. And it's the Prophet ﷺ's job to enter us and thrust us into the Hadra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Li'annasir wa suluk, this traversing of the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to enter the Hadra of the Prophet ﷺ. And it's then the job of the Prophet ﷺ to enter us into the Hadra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadha huwa suluk. This is the suluk. This is not some airy fairy stuff. This is the way of the men of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The things that we're trying to revive here is the ways of Allah the men of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not ibtida. It's not innovation from me. It's not something that I've brought. So people ask, what's Saeed Institute doing? We're just following the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At-tabliq. The tad here, the sacrifice the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. Look at, he says, in... in in the beginning when the Prophet ﷺ was giving the da'wah and there were many people following the Prophet ﷺ, he said he would go to Quraysh and he would tell them about Tawheed, about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Al-Quraysh kanu yaruddun alayhi. They would what? Rebuttal him, reply to him, argue with him. They would insult him. At times they would throw what? Soil over his head. At times they would fall, um, when he was prostrating, they would throw what? Intestines over him. And say, I want, he goes, one of the narrators say, he saw the Prophet وسلم, and people around him. And they ask, who is this person? And he says, he's just this mad person, just calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he saw a woman come to him with a bowl of water. And then he drank from the water. And he made wudu. And this narrator says, who is that woman? And they say that he's the daughter of the Prophet وسلم, Zainab. And he, she comes multiple times in narrations to help the Prophet ﷺ. And she's crying. And the Prophet ﷺ says, La tabki. says, don't cry over me. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect me. That he had what full thiqah, full confidence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And but these people at the beginning, they the special ones. Those sahaba around the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca, they're not the same as those who what, became Muslim at the end after Fat Makkah. Those people who fought with the Prophet in Badr, they are not the same rank as those who entered Islam later on. Why? Because they sacrificed everything for the Prophet. And if we want Islam to survive in the West here, it needs sacrifice. Look at the Prophet ﷺ when he went to Ta'if to meet Thaqif. When the Prophet ﷺ went there after he'd been what? Expelled by the Quraysh more or less. They hadn't accepted his da'wah. It's like you lot. When I tell you to come to the Majlis and you don't come, so I'm going to go Blackburn, I have to go Manchester. They expelled him. When he went to Ta'if, Thaqif. And they said to him, is it? Could Allah not send anyone except you? Imagine the Prophet ﷺ, imagine you know you're the best consultant around, you're the best dentist or the best lawyer around, and someone says, you, you're not very good, and you know that I am Rasulullah ﷺ. Imagine how it hurts your nafs, your ego. Rasulullah ﷺ, sabir, he's patient, because this is the job that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. They say when he walks, safain, what, two rows, start gathering around him while he's walking and they start throwing boulders and stones at the feet of Rasulullah such that his feet start bleeding heavily out of what? 
the da'wah, the tabligh, the tadhiyah, the sacrifice he had for the Prophet ﷺ, he had for the tabligh. They tried many things. They tried to say to him, we'll give you wealth. He refused. They tried to what? In the end, they tried to kill him, but they couldn't. In the end, he had to make hijrah. They fought him, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the deen, the religion of the Prophet ﷺ victorious. And it is still victorious because it's the deen of the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never let the deen of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa become not victorious. However, this is a test for us. This is a test for us. They say in the Royal Marines, if you want to become a Royal Marine, you have to do what? Excruciating test for eight months. They say they make it absolutely difficult for you. They, they make it really difficult for you. It says 80% of people fail. The test to become, we don't want to become the Royal Marines, don't get me right. But they, they make it extremely difficult for you. So they, they want to see, do you have the metal to become from the Royal Marines? Meaning that in a situation of war, would, how would you be? And so only 20% survive. We are what by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing the metal of the Muslims. Say, so how many of us will survive the sabr that we have? What to make this deen victorious? Do we fall flat? Or do we have the sabr what? to carry on the message? And he is the test. He is the test. The people in Palestine, they're passing the test. They're ones what? witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they pass away, they'll see Jannah in front of them. They'll be what? alive in their graves as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They'll be fed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, provided sustenance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like in Nahnu. What have we done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Bolton? You think what? Having 10 chaiwalas outside has made us what? A Muslim area? Abadan, never. You think because we speak Gujarati and we have tea and we... You, but, but this is hadik, this is what? Thaqafa and culture. Our methodology is when what? When the adhan is read, you turn that TV off and you go to sal read salah in the masjid. When you hear the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa this moves within you. Something moves within you. You sacrifice everything that you have. You what? Give your children. You sacrifice your children for the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Not somebody else's child. Your child. You sacrifice for the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Say, I will make you into a scholar. I will make you into someone who gives victory to the Prophet ﷺ. So that on the day of judgment, I will see you with the Prophet ﷺ. This is how they were. It's not, I want to say, I want to make my what? A son this and that and whatever and if you can do a bit of islam on the side then do it they are 30 year olds 35 year olds 40 year olds they don't know the basics of their religion and we want to what fight the kuffar or we want to fight the disbelievers Laysa hakada. Laysa hakada. if you want to give victory to the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then give victory to the sharia to what allah, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to propagate and came to convey is the message that he came with as we've heard that he came with the quran he came with what? The Sharia. Follow the Imams of this religion. Follow the way they came with. Follow the methodology of the imma. If you want to seek tasawwuf or suluk, then have a shaykh of tarbiyah that you have. If you want to learn about the rulings, follow a madhab fiqhi. Have a school of thought that you follow. If you want to what? Learn about aqidah. Learn aqidah from the Im imams of aqidah. Don't what? Listen to people who say the mawlid is bid'ah or mawlid is innovation. La abadan. These majalis, what? even Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, who says what? that if you consider these majalis wajib, necessary, then it could be sinful. But then even he says some, you do it one year, not do it not one year. Leave it sometimes, do it sometimes. But even he says that what? the salawat that you recite in the majalis is more than the sin you might incur in the majalis. So even if it was a sin according to Ibn Taymiyyah, this Majlis would have more benefit and more reward. That even those who refute us with wisdom, but we, these majalis are azim in Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that what? That this majlis is shown to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he hears us, he sees us, and he accepts it in his court. And that what? For stug for, and that he what? Seeks repentance for us, lowly selves, for us sinful souls, that we become from those that Allah, that as we've heard, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows us and that he accepts us and that he intercedes on our behalf 
On a day, Anas yal tamisoon al anbiya. They'll be going to the anbiya. Go to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Go to Nuh alayhi salam. Go to what? Musa alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam. To intercede on their behalf. All of them that says, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. The whole of creation, the biggest mawlid that will ever happen, will happen on the day of judgment. When the whole of creation from man, from beginning to the end of time, yaltamisoon al nabi. They will come to the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and they will ask for the intercession, the fasl qada. They will ask for, for the reckoning to begin. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say his what? Eternal word, ana laha. Ana laha. I'm for it. So if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one who cares for us, the one who what? Ask repentance for us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we follow his way and we call him our Sayyid and our liege Lord and our master then can we not sacrifice a small amount of time to follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam look outside look, you know I'm from here I'll tell you we're a lost bunch with Fulan say he don't pray in that masjid Fulan says don't go here this one what, is dodgy guy and businessman you know this one lies to your face this one we're a dodgy bunch tamam I know because I deal with you lot day in, day out. Islam. Islam is to take your nafs and put it to the side and follow the sharia of the Prophet sallallahu I want to akzib, I want to lie. So la, the Prophet sallallahu said, this isn't how we do it, we don't do it. Mumkin, I don't want to pray. La, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is an obligation. You get to a stage when what? You put the nafs to the side and you follow the way of the Prophet. This takes time. It's not going to happen by majlis or majlis saying one gathering, two gatherings. You need to come persistently and you need to sacrifice something of your time and then see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with you and enters barakah in your life, in your knowledge, in your relationships, in your ilm, in your sincerity. And now we seek what? The acceptance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the wasila, through the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The last thing that I want to mention is just the institute because um, people ask what does the institute do? If you look in the booklet, most things that I mentioned that, that we do are in the booklet. The projects that we're involved in. Alhamdulillah, a few weeks ago we had uh, one of our esteemed teachers, Sheikh Salah Abul Hajj, who's the dean of the Hanafi Fiqh College in Jamia Tulum, Islamiya in Tabarbur in Amman. He came down and we had a good 10 days with him and we benefited greatly from his knowledge and we benefited greatly from his wisdom in Hanafi Fiqh and other topics and we took him to guide and so and we took him to other institutions around the UK and we saw what the benefit of calling teachers and connecting to teachers that are what um, you know traditional and that they spread a message that is what correct and accurate and that's what Said Institute is all about you see there's extremism around us on both sides, those that were called ifrat and tafrit, those that move to extremes in the understanding of Islam. This is a wrong way of spreading the deen. The is, deen is always wasat, is always between extremes. And to understand how to be in the, this middle path is to follow the imams, the rightly guided imams. If, if I follow an imam in fiqh, an imam in aqidah, and an imam in tasawwuf, ana fil wasat. I'm in the what? The rightly guided bunch. If I bring my nafs into it, or if I have what? Opinions that are not being concurred upon by the ummah, and what we call sayr al ummah of the ulama, I'm not concurred upon this, I'm moving towards what? This way and that way. Our message here is that follow the methodology of the Ahlul Sunnah, whether it's what? In fiqhan, akadiyan, or sulukan that we propagate the methodology, the orthodox, traditional methodology of the Salaf and our Imams and specifically the way of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah and we have classes that we teach on a weekly basis and a monthly basis and short courses where we teach what? Books on the fiqh of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah We also want to understand the importance of creating communities as we've mentioned that knowledge on its own isn't sufficient it needs a locus and a base and these gatherings is what gives it the locus and it gives the base that we need areas or opportunities to practice what we've learned. And that's also what we create, that we create knowledge and we create the base or the basis or the opportunities to practice that knowledge. And so we ask everyone, 
that they support the institute, whether it's this one or other ones. We're not about creating a revolution at the hands of Saeed Institute. It doesn't matter to us. It doesn't matter to us. What we want is to follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ, whether it comes on our hands or the hands of others. It doesn't matter to us. But if you find that this is something that benefits you and is something that can what you can get involved in, then ahlan wa sahlan. You're welcome to get involved. But it needs help from you, whether that be what? Physical help. Don't be shy. Phone, email, come, come to meetings. Don't be shy. Come, get involved. You see, look, the women, they get involved. Majority of this event was planned by the women. Sorry, Anis. Majority of this what? event was planned by the women. I don't know what the guys do. It's what? Munga misun fit dunya. They were all about making wealth, 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 dunya. Dunya lion fa. It's not going to benefit you if it's not done for the right reasons. Tamam, you have to always also get involved. You have to be role models for your children and for your women folk. They need to see you as their exemplars in society. Not stand behind and let your, everyone else do the work. La, the Prophet ﷺ led from the front. He was the one who wore afrada. In, uh, what, in, uh, in Uhud, he says, the Prophet ﷺ, afrada bi tis'at ashkas. Nine men were around the Prophet ﷺ. They threw a boulder at the Prophet ﷺ and his, what, his incisor broke. And what, Rahim, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu, and, and the Prophet ﷺ, he had a gush on his face. And they thought that the Prophet ﷺ has passed away. It says nine men surrounded the Prophet ﷺ to protect him. He was what? He was courageous. He didn't stand behind his women folk and let them do the fighting. Like they were at the front. You see, we've become emasculated. Nor do we want to teach, nor do we want to learn, nor do we want to sacrifice, nor do we parent, nor can we talk. Like that is what we, what we do. We sit on our phones and then we get on debt on cryptocurrency and we talk to them. Hakadha role models, this is the men of today. Laysa Hakadha. The Prophet and the companion, we all, all football, that game that what, we watch that people pass a football around. It says, what, this way and that way, this way and that way, this way and that way. Ball goes this way, ball goes that way, ball goes this way, ball goes that way. Ya Allah. Hakadha, these are the ushak, these are the what, the lovers of the Prophet is better spend your time, what, as a family you spend, what, sink aside of the Prophet or you read about the Prophet you can't expect what, victory to come from a void, it's never going to come from a void, it's never going to one day, what, we've got people now throwing bombs at the ummah and all of a sudden what, the ummah is going to come out victorious, it doesn't happen like that. It takes effort and work. So if we don't wake up at the scenes that we see around us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this majlis becomes what? A means for what? Faraj. For victory for the Muslims elsewhere. Because it's our sins. It's our sins. What does he say? Al-Yafi, he says in the class, فَكُلُّ ذَا مِنْ ذَنْبِنَا That all of this that we see is from our sins. This is the thing that has darkened the hearts. Our sins, nobody else's, the finger always points at us. And when we look at Palestinians and our Muslim brothers being hurt in other places, the points are hints at us. Always points at us. What did I do to help those people abroad or in other lands? How can I help those people? By what? Sacrificing your time for Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam So we ask that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accepts this majlis That He raises our ulama, people like Shaykh Wasim and guidance So He raises them in ilm and knowledge and sincerity And that we benefit from His works and His knowledge And He what? Blesses the people like Al-Musafirun who I love Man and Nasheed a lot And so when I listen to these voices I'm on it. I'm in a different world. And Sheikh and Sheikh Ismail al Kurdi and Sheikh Said. And this institute is also called Saeed because it's meant is after our Sheikh Mashaikh and Sheikh Muhammad Saeed al Kurdi. Well, Sheikh Ismail al Kurdi is where this, these majalis and these gatherings takes his sanad from. And his father is Sheikh Saeed al Kurdi, who was what? The one who gave ijazah to Sheikh Abdurrahman al Shaguri. Sheikh al Hashmi would say, what? Had al Qasaid mutun al Miyah. That these Qasaid are what? actually texts of knowledge they're not just whatever you know Allah. these are ma'ani raqi amika they have deep meanings within inside of them such that it's not your brain or intellect that takes it's your ruh that takes meaning from them they ask one of them why are you crying in the majlis so you don't understand what's being read 
He's, and he said, I don't know. He says, I just feel something when I listen to these words. And the sheikh said, it's because he, the, here what takes is the ruh, not the ear. When you listen to ma'ani, what's being taken is the ruh takes meanings from it, even if you understand it or not. That's why they say, what well, if I've got a qasida, I don't understand it. Shall I recite it or not recite it? It's better to recite with understanding. But even if you recite the words of the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without meaning, it'll affect your ruh. Just like, because what, this is a matter of the metaphysics. That we have good hope that we, in following the imams of our way that we will reach the Prophet ﷺ and in turn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept us by the wasila and the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts this majlis and all of you take part. Whether in a small way or in a large way that you take part and you help because we need your help to make what? Progress in this community. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam.